Christopher Nkunku could be reconsidering his future at Chelsea Football Club. These are the latest rumours that have been developing over the last 24 hours. Basically since the end of the Chelsea Arsenal game. So in this video, we are going to be delving into Christopher Nkunku and his time at Chelsea. The realism of these rumours or like the, the legitimacy of them. And whether we should be letting Nkunku go. Especially to a rival. Seeing as Manchester United links are starting to surface a little bit as well. But before we get in, as always, we've got to do the housekeeping. Big up to every single one of you that's locked in. Hit the likes, subscribe, um, hit a super thanks if you guys want to get involved in the latest uh, lottery to win a free shirt from Jersey's FC. And yeah, I hope everybody is recovering from yesterday's disappointing result. In terms of performance, I, I find it hard to be disappointed with a lot of aspects of the game except lapses of concentration poor decision making in transition other than that i don't really feel like there's a lot to be too annoyed about obviously sanchez typical and like we said the lapses defensively we we really have a little concentration issue that we need to just start working ourselves out of but that's a story for another time you guys are not here for a Chelsea Arsenal dialogue, Bun Arsenal. We are here to discuss Christopher Nkunku because the Telegraph is reporting that Nkunku is considering his future at Chelsea. And Chelsea are understood to only be willing to listen to offers if they can recoup their full £52 million transfer fee back for the player. Which kind of makes a bit of sense anyway. Obviously, you want to recoup the money that you've got on him if it doesn't work out. And we've shown with ourselves that we're capable of doing that. But they weren't the only um, um, out news outlet speaking on this uh, situation. Le Keep, who are a very reputable, very well-known French source, have come out and said that Manchester United have also inquired about Christopher Nkunku, who is considering his future at Chelsea. He has no intention of playing second fiddle in the Premier League. And if he was to move, he would not favour a loan and would prefer to look for another challenge. Whereas Chelsea may be open to a departure given their bottleneck at the front with Jao Felix and Mudrik. Which I think is a nice way of saying we, we have a lot of players that can play in the role that Nkunku's playing. So we may be open to a departure. But I also think like that is a very speculative point to be made. But simply put, Nkunku is, frust is frustrated with his minutes and he is considering a potential departure. I don't think it's anything concrete. I don't think it's anything set in stone. He isn't set on leaving the club, but he's considering his options because he's back. He's fully fit and it's been a very frustrating season for him. He's done very well in terms of goals, albeit because he's been given the conference league minutes for the most part. But in the Premier League, barely barely like state stated a claim or anything he's barely shone he's also not really been given a lot of opportunities either now I, I do think he's been iffy when we've seen him play in the prem but again he hasn't been um afforded a lot of opportunities to even write him off or to say this guy definitely isn't good enough he is a scrub we need to get rid of him i'd sell him to a rival like a kai Havertz, like a mason mount for example that's how, that's why I could potentially see, like, God forbid, a situation where he does go to Manchester United. Because United have inquired. That is what the source is saying. So they have spoken to Chelsea and they've asked what the situation is with Nkunku. Whether we would be open to potentially selling him in the future transfer window. But we haven't even got to a position to write him off. And, like, this is where I understand Nkunku's frustration because he gets limited opportunities to make an impact off the bench. And then we question him for not having a lot of impact. And that's what I struggle to understand. Now, I get why he doesn't start. Jackson offers more as a number nine. I get it. People want to see him play in the 10, push Palmer out wide and have Nonny drop to the bench. But... I'm not sure if Palmer offers what Nonny offers defensively or what he's started to offer more defensively because there are still aspects where he's lazy off the ball. Look at the goal that we conceded yesterday as an example for that. Nonny doesn't even bother tracking back, but he has got better at it 
So we can't use that one instance to say that he doesn't do the role. And that's why I think he gets given more opportunities on the right-hand side as opposed to an Nkunku, for example. And plus, Nkunku ain't great on the wings anyway. We've noticed that from when he was playing on the right, when he came on against Forest, when he started on the left against Manchester City. He just doesn't look that comfortable playing on the wings. So he's competing in the 10 with Cole Palmer. And with that, I understand why he doesn't start. I have no problems with that. But my problem is we, we don't bring him on early enough in instances where we should do it. Like, we, we can all acknowledge that this is probably Palmer's first bad patch for Chelsea. And yet we have persisted with him and barely looked at the opportunity to bring Nkunku on until it's past 80 minutes or past 75 minutes. Like if we go through his last few substitute appearances, he came on at 88 minutes yesterday against Arsenal. He was unused against Manchester United. Both games Palmer wasn't really that involved in. 78 minutes against Newcastle is when he came on. 76 minutes against Liverpool, and then he came on at the left wing. And then against Nottingham Forest, he came on at 81 minutes, and he was playing on the right. You go further back, 79 minutes against Brighton. Like From what I'm seeing here, the last time he came on before the 70th minute was West Ham away. So he's barely getting a chance to get involved and get into the game because it's usually very difficult for substitutes to come on and have an immediate impact. They need to get into the phase of the game and the speed of it. They need to like get into it a little bit more. It's a bit tough to describe, isn't it? But when a game's flowing and you throw a new substitute in, most of the time they need a couple minutes to really get involved in the match. And I think with Nkunku, like... We bring him on too late for him to really get an impact in matches. And that's why I can't write him off just yet. Which is why I don't want us to let him go. Because, especially to a rival, first off. Like, Amarim might be able to cook with him. Amarim's a good manager. He'll probably play in Kunku as one of the inside tens. And that would be perfect for him to start flowing and to start getting more involved offensively. Because we know what he's like. He's a good finisher. He's good in tight spaces. Nice, tidy dribbler. But he needs to play in central areas. We bring him on late and half the time we're playing him in wide areas. And he just doesn't look comfortable in those, in those positions. So he's barely getting a chance to get involved. Which is where I see Nkunku's frustration. Because it's not a lack of minutes. We're blessed with the fact that we have the Conference League. So we can just throw the Conference League to players like Nkunku who aren't getting into the first team. But we need to be more willing to bring him on. Or other players in that role as well when we need when we need um substitutes in the game in premier league matches because look palmer is palmer but we need to be willing to take him off when he's having bad games and i don't see us do that it's like one of my few gripes with maresca if someone like palmer's having a bad game just take him off there's no issues with that one thing that i rated from antonio conte when he was at chelsea was that he was never shy to take Eden Hazard off. Whether it was because the game was done and he wanted to conserve his, his fitness or because he was having the odd bad game and we wanted to take him off. He was willing to take off our best players. I need to see that from Maresca too because Nkunku is a good player and we also talk about the quality that we have in terms of our strength and depth. Utilise it. Utilise it. Otherwise, you stand to lose that depth. Jal Felix, for example, he was apparently fuming on the bench when he saw Rhys James coming on um, in the 81st minute. And then when he saw Nkunku coming on because he realised he wasn't going to get any minutes. To a point that's okay because of competition and everything. But also these players could have come on earlier. Like Palmer was already coming off an injury or a knock and he wasn't performing anyway. Take him off. Take him off. Give Nkunku like the 60, 65th minute from or something. And if he's got that sort of array of minutes and he doesn't impress, I understand. I completely understand. But we bring him on with like, what, 10, 15 minutes left to go in the game? And we expect him to just come in and instantly have an impact. It's not as cut and dry like that. It's not as cut and dry like that. And ultimately, we will, we will know where we stand with Nkunku by the end of the season because we're not going to get rid of him in January. But we need to give him the opportunities. 
Palmer's not in good form. So, if he's not performing, be willing to take him off and put Nkunku in the middle. Because that seems to be the best available role for him. Because Jackson's just offering more in the nine. And he ain't comfortable on the wings. So it is what it is. I obviously don't want to see him start over Cole Palmer. But he is the perfect backup for that role. And he would be fine and happy in that role if we utilised him a little bit more. And my whole thing is just that I don't think we're utilising him enough. Which is why now he's considering his options and he's potentially looking elsewhere. So it's something that we need to keep an eye on. And it's something that... I would hopefully want to see a little bit of improvement in, in terms of utilising Nkunku and managing his minutes a little bit more. Because, like, between him, Jal Felix and Dewsbury Hall in that position, I feel like Nkunku's the one that I'm going to trust the most. Like, Jal Felix gets on the ball a lot, but I, I don't really trust his decision-making like that. And, and Dewsbury Hall, I just don't think is at the level of either of them, respectfully. So, yeah, I want to see us try and trust Nkunku a little bit more. But, yeah, let me know you guys' thoughts down in the comment section below. If the worst comes to worst and we have to get rid of him, just not to a rival, allow it. I don't think this is a Mount or a Habit sort of player where he's an absolute scrub. So, yeah, if he has to go, send him abroad, ideally. But utilise him. Utilise him a little bit more. That would be nice. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit the likes, subscribe, all of that crap. And we'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care and up the chels.